So now we've created some plant symbols, we've added definitions to those, and we've got a schedule. Let's start putting some plants into our project. I'm going to say that this is a garden bed here, and I'm just going to put three different types of plants in to um, illustrate how to use it. So if we come back to our plant tool, we make sure we're on insertion mode. We'll have a look at these two other modes shortly. And first I'm going to go to put in a single plant and I'm going to select my tree, this crepe myrtle, and I'm going to drop one here. So it's good for a planting plan because it's got a simple outline. It's got a um, cross in the center and a tag coming off with the quantity and an abbreviation. Next, we're going to use put some plants in using this polyvertex placement mode. And I'm going to select this Ostrostiper. And with this one, what I'm able to do is I'm able to click around and put in multiple copies of this plant. And then to finish, like a polyline, I double click. Because I have mass plants on, it's actually gotten rid of the internal lines in here. It's also got crosses that are quite large for this plant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this plant. I'm going to come over to my object info panel and this will allow me to edit some of the visualizations of this plant. But it'll only apply out to this one that I've got selected. So. One thing that I might do is I might come over to the tick size and change this to a 1 to shrink the cross down to be a bit more appropriate to the size of it. Other things that I might do are toggle on or off the mass plants. So you can see when I have that off, what it does is it uh, keeps the full outline of each plant. For what we're trying to do, I think having mass plants on will be the best to illustrate it. Alright, I'm going to go and put some more plants in. So this time I'm going to use this stringing method and I'm going to choose this Chrysocephalum. Let's make a border with it. So I have hedge mode on at the moment, which is this one here. I can toggle this on or off. Um, so it'll layer up multiple plants. I'm going to have this off and just use the standard string one so I can put just one line of plants around the outside. And double click to finish and here we go. It's popped the plants in along that line uh, and it's given us one tag on there. All right. If I then decided that I'd put one of the, the polyline vertexes in the wrong spot, what I can do is I can come back and edit it like it's a polyline by double clicking and selecting path and OK. From here now, I can move, add or delete the vertexes. So if I choose to move, I could click once, move my mouse and click again to move the end point. If I increase the space, it may add in an extra plant. If I decrease, decrease it, it might get rid of a plant. I could also use the plus. So I might click on this last vertex here. And then you can see that my polyline tools reappeared. And I could click back up to here. And it's sort of adding in extra line up to this point. I could have also done the opposite and done the minus and then clicked on one of these vertex points and it'll bring it back to the to the next vertex. All right, let's move on to the next insertion method. I can go plant and these are effectively the same except that one puts a grid in and, and one uh, puts a staggered planting in. So works like a polyline. You denote an area and when you finish it'll fill it with plants. You notice that this has given it very rigid vertical and horizontal grid. Whereas if I had have used this mode here, what it will do is stagger them 
so that now I have a horizontal line that, and sorry, a diagonal and a horizontal line that are consistent, but as a whole, it'll look more uh, full and irregular than this mode here. Okay, let's do uh, a couple more little splashes of plants. Uh, let's grab the chrysocephalum and we'll fill out this area. And next I'm going to put in a couple more trees and we're going to do them slightly differently. No, actually I'll just put in a couple of dappled plants on the outside. So I'm going to go back to this polyline and I'm going to dapple a couple around in here. And you can see what's happened is that because I've used the plant tool in just the one mode, it's put these plants and spaced them out and they have a relationship because I, if I click on one it selects all of them. However, what it's doing is it's just creating one plant tag off that whole group, which would be misleading. If I looked at this, I wouldn't know that there's necessarily a relationship between these, especially because I've got the random sizes on as well. So what can I do here? One thing that you could do is you could select these and you could come over to your object info panel and you could go to polygon display and change it to one of these different modes. I might go centers dashed and what it's done is it's co connected these up with a polyline. So now I know that they're all of the one group. Some people will tell you that uh, the tag should come off one of the ends which is probably sensible and a way I could do this, we'll go back into this in more detail soon, but I can select it, click on one of the vertexes that currently meets on the plant and then go and click it onto one of the ends. And now my tag is connected to that rather than one in the middle. Another way I could ap approach this would be to select it, come up to landmark and select change plant grouping and what this has done here is it's separated them out to be individual plants again um, so now I've got a tag for each perhaps that's a little bit cluttered um, and this might be a more sensible approach another thing I'm going to show you with the changing of plant groupings is that it can be done to connect up individual plants or other groups of plants so if I had to put in some different single insertion mode plants and after a while as I was clicking around I realized that they connected up I could have come back and then selected each of those come up to landmark and again selected change plant grouping and what you can see here is it's uh, stuck those together for me I'll just get that one out of the way and it's gotten rid of the internal lines and masked them. This is only working because I've got the mass plants function on by default. And this is a sensible way to join things together. This will also be appropriate if you have two clusters overlapping rather than just a two single plants, two or more single plants. So if I select these two and come up to landmark and down to change plant grouping I can either combine these into one single plant or all into individual plants so if I combine them into one now it's gotten rid of the internal lines where they overlap and I'm down to just one tag for that which is quite handy. Now that we've got a fair few plants in uh, what we might want to do is set up the way that the uh, tags are shown. So everyone's got their own preferred methods for this. I, what I look for generally is consistency and cleanliness. Is it really easy to see what's happening? So to move tags, the simplest way is to select the cluster of plants or the single plant. And you'll notice that these vertexes come up. Now the one that's connected to a plant can be clicked on move your mouse and click again. Don't drag, just click and then move and click again. 
and this way I can move it so it's connected to the different center of a plant. Generally we keep these to the outside and you can move them to more advantageous spots so that it's easier to not have overlapping leader or shoulder lines somewhere in your project. If I select the second one, what I can do is now move the angle of the leader line and very rarely you'll want to change your shoulder. If you change the angle it's going to also change the angle of text which is probably not very often helpful to you. You could shorten the shoulder line though um, to neaten things up. Now I've done all this by changing these vertexes but we could also have selected our plant and come and manually overridden things in our object info panel as well. So we could have come down here and set the tag approach to a standard angle like that. We could have changed the shoulder angle there as well. Um, that would be helpful in some situations. What, what a really nice low-tech way of neatening things up is, is to just draw a line down the side of your project as a guide and then you can start to snap on your leader lines to this line. So I could go through and then select the different plants that I have and bring them out there. I've snapped these onto the horizontal and you can see that because I've changed the length of this shoulder it's no longer at the same distance away as this one. So what I could do here is come select it, hit this end of shoulder line vertex and then move my mouse along until I hover over the point that I want it to line up with and because I've got my smart snaps on it's going to remember that. Now I can come back down and you can see it's giving me that vertical dotted line and I can click here and now I should have perfect alignment there. So that's one way I could work my way through and line things up. But Vectorworks also has a, has a custom tool made to do this for you as well. So for that I might select multiple different plants. And then come up to modify down to align and align distribute leader lines. The first mode we're going to have on is this vertical distribution none and OK and I think the best way to show you is to just do it and let you see the results. So what it's asking me to do is draw a line to be used as a reference. So I'm going to draw a vertical line here and what it's doing is it's moving the end of the leaders back to this point and then popping all of these plants on here. Now it all looks pretty neat vertically, but I do have some overlap here which is definitely going to cause me a problem. So let's go back and have a look at the next method. So modify, align, align distribute leader lines. The next one's going to do parallel objective lines. So objective line and leader line are the same thing. So it's going to set a standard angle for these. So again I'm going to draw my line and it's going to set about pasting them out and it's going to use the, uh, the standard angle as the, the, the top one. Again, this looks pretty neat, but I'd probably have to change one or two, so uh, I'd be able to manually change some things in here to get spacing, or I could come back again and try a different mode up here. And this time I'm going to go equal distance between shoulder lines. So this is going to be helpful, and it's going to space out my uh, bubbles neatly. So it's spaced out my bubbles, but what it's done is it's done it based on the first two in position, which are close to each other, which is not ideal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this cluster here. I'm going to move this one up and out of the way so that I have some spacing between these two. And now I'm going to do the same thing again. Modify, align, align distribute leader lines equal distance I'm going to draw in my line and let's see what happens 
Now that's pretty neat. We've got even spacing between each. Some people really detest having randomized angles coming off their drawings and I can understand that. So what you need to do is decide on a style that works for you and then play with the different settings within those tools until you get something that you like. Now, what we could also do is look at the text size as well if things are too big for bigger than what they need to be necessarily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all my plants. One easy way for me to do it would be because I've only got three types of plants is to grab this magic wand tool and the standard setting that it has on. When I click on one plant it should find all of the other instances of that. And now if I hold down the shift key I can grab the other plants within my project. Now from here I could come up to text and I could set the size. Now 12 is great for someone on a construction site because they can probably squint without going to get their glasses from the center console uh, to read this or you might want to shrink it down a little bit so that things fit neatly on your page. Now as I shrink the text it's also going to shrink the size of my bubbles and this might allow me to fit more on and, and do a neater job. Okay, so after you've uh, gone around and neatened up your um, tags, another thing that you might want to do is just to create a bit of a hierarchy between uh, line weights as well. So I could come back to my plants, I could double click on a plant, and this time we're going to edit the 2D graphic rather than uh, the definition or the path. I'm going to go OK, and it gives me access to the line work that I've drawn inside. From here I could come over to my attributes panel and change the line weight. So I might do something like a 0.5 thickness line for a largish plant. And then maybe for medium shrubs, I probably don't have any in here, but I'll change this for example. And I might put these down to something like 0.35. What I'm doing is creating a hierarchy of sort of proximity to where the camera is and my ground covers stay the smallest. So this might be something that you want to do to uh, help bring some hierarchy to your drawing as well. Okay, that's going to be enough for this video. We're going to do one last one uh, covering a few of the final points um, and you should be ready to present for conceptual work.